Charles and Rube Goldberg. Um, we are building up to next week. Uh, you'll be submitting your final video. I've actually already posted the Flipgrid topic if you go to our Flipgrid page, um, but I'll post the assignment for that after our lesson on Friday. My challenge to you this week is to finish up your machine. Uh, looking at the pictures and videos most of you submitted, some of you are like already done. Some of you are making some good progress. Um, the next thing to do is to decorate it. So obviously you need to get it working, that's the main thing. But then if you're up to that, um, decorating it, a lot of students in the past have done a theme, like a graduation theme or a COVID-19 theme or a Tiger King theme, something like that, whatever you wanna do. But it just means you're adding things on that aren't necessarily part of the main mechanism. Um, and this is by no means a requirement, this is just for fun, um, but that's something you can do. Uh, missing assignments, obviously, again, we only have one week left, and so if you have any missing work, um, please work through that. And uh, you can check all that on Canvas. And by the way, I'm flipping through all of our tasks. Uh, again, this is Unit 5 Lesson 8, so make sure you're looking for a discussion board or assignment uh, with U5L8 tasks for that. Uh, the final thing is I did grade your tests. So I provided a link for it. It's the third bullet point after number one, but if you just go to quizzes, you can also just open up the test on Canvas like you did when you were taking it, and you should see that it has now been graded, and any questions that it took points off of, I wrote a little comment or gave you some feedback about why. So I encourage you to take a moment to look through that now. Um, don't freak out if you see like 69 or 72. Uh, does anyone know how many points was the test out of? 75. Is that a 75? So 72 out of 75 is an A. Um, 69 out of 75, as far as I know, I think is an A, or at least a high B plus. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're looking at numbers, don't get nervous. Uh, by all means, please email me if you have individual concerns or anything like that. Um, what was it like taking a test that was written by your classmates? You think it was harder or easier than what we would normally throw at you? I felt it was around <coughs> the same. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I did try to like edit the, the questions a little bit. Um, my personal favorite was a lot of you submitted a multiple choice question, but no answer options. You just like wrote the question. And I don't know, in my opinion, half the work of a multiple choice question is coming up with answers that are, you know, enough that are, they're going to throw people off. Uh, but anyway, but I did my best to try to come up with answers. Um, I also like that a lot of you kind of didn't submit what the correct answers would be. So kind of left it to me to figure all that out, but I did. Uh, and so by all means, though, let me know if I messed something up, if I chose an answer that was, that I thought was correct, that maybe wasn't what you were intending. Um, looking through my notes on grading, um, the eccentricity question, some people stumbled on putting units on the numbers. This was question four for you guys. Uh, the other thing that you had to take away from that was that the closer to zero the number is, that means it's more circular. And so it was dimos should have had a lower number, a lower ratio, which means it's more circular, not phobos. Uh, if you wrote something else in there, but you meant Dimos, I tried to make the, the correction. Some of you like spelled Dimos incorrectly, uh, but I tried to give you points back for that. Uh, the FET simulation, a lot of you described the new orbit as an oval, um, and I don't think I ever used that word before. Does anyone know what, what word did I use to describe that shape of orbit that isn't circular? Ellipse. It's technically an ellipse, and I know I'm being technical here, but an oval is actually sort of more of an egg shape. Uh, it's not symmetric. Uh, an ellipse is, uh, is more of a symmetric kind of an extended circle. So again, I know I'm being technical there, but I wanted to see elliptical, not, or, not, not oval um, rotation for that question. That was um, question number uh, six for you guys. Um, beyond there, it all, it all went fine. Um, I thought some, there were some harder questions here, especially stuff about the eclipses and um, you know, why the size seems similar. I was looking for that 400 times larger, 400 times more distant. Um, everyone did great on the multiple choice questions, which was impressive. I thought some of those were pretty challenging too. Um, the sunrise and sunset on Venus, I initially thought it was because of the Earth's, the rotation of the planet the other way and it's slow rotation, but it actually has a very thick atmosphere. So if you mentioned any of those things, you were good. The Goldilocks zone, the key thing I was looking for was um, that liquid water is possible. That was kind of like the main uh, thing to get most of the points there. Uh, extra credit, you just had to mention Rube Goldberg was a cartoonist, though he was also an inventor and things like that. Um, but he mainly drew his machines. Um, and geosynchronous orbits, just when a satellite floats over one part of Earth and can be used for you know, weather uh, forecasting and cell phone signals and that kind of thing. All right, any questions on the quiz? Or sorry, I should say the test.
Okay, again, by all means, please contact me individually if you have individual questions or anything like that. Uh, all right, so the next task then is to introduce you to the case study that we're gonna work through. Uh, it's called Farming in Space, How to Develop Sustainable Crops on Mars. There's a do now uh, that I'd like you to complete. This is uh, number two on the tasks list. There's a video that you need to watch of me. It's just me reading the introduction to the case study. Uh, you can actually open up the case study document too. It's linked in there uh, and you can read along if you want, but there's a Google form that you should complete after watching the video. I'm gonna time us for eight minutes to do that and then we'll come back together to review. So eight minutes to watch the video of me introducing the uh, form. Let me know if something doesn't work or if you have questions. Go for it. Your minds around, but um, it's a pretty good amount of farmland. Uh, when you think about that would be the biggest thing we would have ever built on another planet. Uh, it's not much when you think about like how much farmland we have in California to feed most of the United States. Uh, but we're only feeding 100 people here. So there's going to be a way we can probably efficiently use these thousand acres to grow food sustainably. And that's what we're going to kind of build up to in this case study. Yeah, Olivia. I just looked up how many acres are in Disneyland and there's 72 acres in Disneyland. So oh. I can see. So you could fit quite a few Disneylands in that biodome. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should screw that. We should say, forget the crops. Let's just make a bunch of Disneylands. We'll, we'll survive on that. <laughs> uh, now we're gonna ignore the journey. Um, it takes uh, anywhere between three and eight months to get to Mars itself. We're gonna assume that that was covered, that we've eaten food on a spaceship or something like that. I don't know what. Uh, but the point is when you land on the planet with your crew of 100 people, so they would know how long you have before you're gonna have to start eating the food that you've grown. 90 days. It's about three months, right? So that's another thing to take into consideration when we think about what crops we need to bring. You're gonna need to have some kind of harvest done uh, within those first 90 days uh, because your food supplies that you have with you are eventually gonna run out. Again, we're gonna ignore the journey. We're just gonna assume that you got there and now you've got 90 days to get things going. So you got a biodome, you've got a limited set of time, you've got a thousand acres. Um, we need to consider now what crops to bring. And there's a couple other factors. Um, does anyone know what we now use in modern agriculture that makes plants grow faster? Fertilizer. Fertilizer is kind of heavy though, right? So, you know, how much fertilizer are we going to bring? And is it going to be a reusable kind of fertilizer? Um, those are all things we're going to have to consider. There's also the issue of like recycling water and, um, and plant waste. Does anyone know what yield is? Like if you want to have a high yield crop, what does that mean per plant? Like a lot of... Either like a lot per plant, I guess. Yeah, like food, like calories that we can yeah. consume. You want to maximize that per plant that you grow. And so again, these are just some of the factors. There are millions of factors we can consider. And part of our goal today is to consider those. So uh, on the tasks list under step three, I have posted a link to an actual copy of the case study packet. So you can open that up and you can look all through that. The introduction is exactly what I read during the video. And my goal today, there's four parts. I wanna complete part one and part two today in groups. Uh, part one is gonna be reflecting on possible challenges. Part two is gonna be um, setting criteria for the crops that you're gonna bring with you. So not deciding on the crops just yet, but more deciding on what factors are most important. And then in part three, you'll be selecting the crops and part four will be reflecting. We're gonna do that on Friday. So part one, um, this is now step four in the uh, tasks list. Uh, part one is called sustainability considerations. Here's how I want to do this. I'm going to split you into pre-assigned groups of three or four. I have those listed in that little um, Google sheet there. If you click on that link, science to H farming and space groups. I'm going to split you into breakout rooms. And the first thing you need to do is assign roles. Um, just like we would do in a poll goal, one of you is going to be the reader who's going to read the question and instructions out loud for everyone else to hear and follow along with on the Zoom. One of you is the scribe, meaning that's the person who's actually typing the response and posting the response to the activity uh, with the help of the group. And the timer, who's going to keep track of time, uh, there'll be instructions on how much time to set. This first activity is going to be 10 minutes once you're in your breakout room, and I'll come check in as well. Uh, so this first part is a Canvas discussion board post. Uh, the link for it is right there. It's that third bullet point on, under step number four, Science 2H Part 1 Sustainability Considerations Canvas Discussion. All the instructions and questions are there on the discussion instructions, so you can check those out as a group. Now, I'm going to warn you, um, breakout rooms have been malfunctioning on my Zoom. Uh, I recently po posted a post. I think the issue is that some people are updated on their Zoom program and some aren't. 
um, you need version five uh, to make sure things work. Uh, typically in my class, the first round has worked, the second round hasn't, but I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, if we can't get it to work, then we'll just do things individually. Uh, but I have created the room. So, so just know that if you get kicked out of the room or something like that, um, just come back in, I'll readmit you, and we'll work with it from there. Um, but I'll come check in with each of you about this. Rooms are open, go for it. Max and Tammy. Okay, does everything seem to be working? So it's just crops, especially with like very little resources. Yeah, so we're gonna have to have something where, again, you can till the soil really efficiently um, and maximize the use of the space uh, and still move around in there too. Olivia? We were coming up with like the same problem and uh, one factor is like if you plant constantly in the same dirt over time, um, it will like lose its nutrition and you have to like, like farmers, they plant and then they like toil the soil and have to wait a long period of time before planting again. So we thought that we would divide ours into like fourths mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. cycle so we don't have to like control the whole entire land at once. Yeah, good thinking. Max? Uh, I just have a question. So, um, for example, like you could say that we, you said that we could bring soil to be able to plant certain types of vegetables or foods. Yeah, um, fertilizer too. Yeah, fertilizer. But if a, if a type of vegetable or plant can already grow in the Martian soil, are we okay with that? Like, do we not need to bring other soil if that's all we're going to grow? Yeah, as far as I know from the intro and from the video we watched in the, or, oh no, sorry, that's going to come up. You're about to watch a video related to this, but yes, um, you could use Martian soil from lower down in the stratum that does have some of the organic nutrients, but it's not quite the same as Earth, so there is some stuff we probably have to add in. Um, but yes, you could use Martian soil just like you did in the movie The Martian. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Olivia, relating to what you said too, another thing that farmers do is they often rotate crops. So there are some known crops that will drain soil of nitrogen, but then there's other crops that they know will restock the soil of nitrogen. So that's another strategy. Rather than leaving a field fallow um, and not being used, you can grow a different crop on it, like a vegetable versus or something else weird um, that'll resupply it. But it gets pretty complicated in, in the timing and stuff. So yeah, I think I like your idea of shifting into quarters and managing the land that way. So um, all right, any other questions or comments on part one? Okay, I wanna uh, give you guys a little interlude, um, which is gonna be two Ed Puzzle videos that I'd like you to watch. So again, on the tasks list, this is number five, uh, titled Food in Space. There's two Ed Puzzle links there. The first one is called Science 2H Food in Space. The second one is Science 2H Growing Food on Mars. And so I'd like you to just watch those. They're about two minutes each and answer the questions. If you can't get Ed Puzzle to work, um, I recommend trying to log out and then log back in again. Um, since some of you use Edpuzzle for your projects, that might be messing that up. But if you can't get it to work, I have posted links to just the YouTube videos below that. Um, but I'm gonna time us for 10 minutes to complete these two Edpuzzle videos, and we'll come back together to reflect. Go for it. Let me know if something doesn't work. Uh, again, these are all sort of things to consider as we start thinking about crops, right? It, it does seem to be more important almost more from an emotional side and happiness side to have fresher foods, more diverse foods, foods we recognize as, as their foods. So we're going to try to decide then what crops to bring to Mars. Uh, any other questions or comments on those two videos? Okay, uh, then we are on the last part of the tasks list. If you look back at that, it is uh, step number six, I believe. Uh, this is part two, um, criteria for selecting the crops. So you're not actually gonna select which crops to bring just yet. What we're gonna do now is think about what are the top five criteria that you think are the most important things to consider. Is it the water usage that the crops require? Is it the amount of fertilizer? Is it how fast they grow? Is it their yield? Um, what are the top five things out of us that you're going to have an option of 12 different things to choose from about? Uh, this is actually a Google form. This is not a Canvas discussion board. I'm going to try to split us into our breakout rooms again. Um, in my past classes, this has not worked. Um, so if you get kicked out, please just log back in. 
uh, and we'll just transfer to do this individually rather than as groups. But I want, just want to try it just to see um, what happens. So I've opened up the breakout rooms again. See if you can join and we'll go from there. Mr. Aid. Yeah, I see. Um, I'm going to assign you to room one. I see that okay, you're not gotcha. assigned. So, cool. Thank you. Try that. Yeah. Landon, you there? Did you get kicked out? Oh, he did. Okay. From the list below, choose the five most important. Is this is working for everybody. Yeah. Yes. Cool. All right. Thanks. All right. Go for it. Uh, slash calories you will get out of every plant grown. Post. Is this, is this working for everybody? Yes. Sorry, cut you off. Awesome. Cool. Good. All right, go for it. Okay, post harvest processing. All right. So I'll check over those criteria. You're going to use those criteria in our next class meeting on Friday uh, to actually start selecting which crops you want to bring with you. And then we'll do another activity to reflect on it. Uh, I'm super happy. You guys are my first class that actually had the breakout rooms work for the first and second time. Uh, so we'll hopefully continue to work in these groups. Uh, but we'll adapt the next time we meet as well. Uh, so homework is just to make sure that you have your, your group scribe has posted to these two assignments. Um, finalize your Rube Goldberg machine. I encourage you to try decorating it. Catch up on any missing work that you have. Make sure you're checking your grades on Canvas. Uh, there is one other homework assignment, an actual separate homework assignment that I've given you uh, for Friday, and that's gonna be another Ed Puzzle video. Um, you'll see a link for it on the very bottom of the tasks list, but it's a uh, it's about agriculture and human nutrition. It's a very short lesson actually by me, um, but it's just teaching a little bit about agriculture and human nutrition on earth and giving you some ideas for things you should think about when we start thinking about what crops to bring. So please complete that for Friday. Uh, otherwise, the only thing I, other thing I want to mention was um, there's a pretty big historical moment happening uh, right now. I don't know if anyone's been following the news. Uh, does anyone know what's going on down in uh, Texas at the Kennedy Space Center? Yeah, the SpaceX. It's is SpaceX awesome is about space. to launch astronauts, two astronauts into space. Uh, this is the first launch in the U.S. in nine years, ever since NASA uh, was basically defunded. Um, so it's a big moment. Um, it's a private company sending astronauts up. Uh, could pave the way for the moon, for Mars. That's what they're all talking about. Um, so we'll see how it goes. They might delay it. You know, there's so many things that, that can go wrong and they're so careful about everything. Uh, but I posted a link on Canvas to a live YouTube stream. I think ABC is showing it live. Uh, so go check it out. They delayed the launch by an hour already, um, but it should be now kind of counting down. So a pretty, pretty exciting moment if you're free to go watch it. Um, and we'll kind of maybe chat about that the next time we meet on Friday. Uh, all right, kids, that's it for me. I'll hang around uh, if anyone's got any individual questions. Uh, Landon, I'd like to check in with you, please, if that's all right. Uh, everyone else, thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.